Confessions 24 It is not your will that I should agree to the proposition that time is constituted by the movement of a material body. For no body moves except in time. I hear your voice which tells me this. But it is not your voice which tells me that the movement of a body itself constitutes time. For when a body moves, it is by time that I measure how long its motion lasts, from the time when it begins to move until its movement ceases. If I do not see when its movement begins, and if its movement continues after I have ceased to watch, so that I do not see when it ends, I am not able to measure it except perhaps from the time when I began to watch until the time when I cease watching. If I watch it for any length of time, I can only say that its movement lasts a long time. I cannot say how long that time is, because we can only say how long time is when we compare it with a given standard. For example, we say that one period is as long or twice as long as another and so on. But if we can mark the point in space between which a moving body travels, or in the case of a body rotating upon its own axes, the distance through which its parts are moving, we can say how much time is needed for the body to complete its movement between the two points or for its parts to complete their revolution. It is clear then that the movement of a body is not the same as the means by which we measure the duration of its movement. This being so, it must be obvious which of the two ought more properly to be called time. The same body may move at different speeds, and sometimes it is at rest, and we measure not only its motion but also its rest by means of time. We say that it was at rest for the same length of time as it was in motion, or that it stood still for twice or three times as long as it moved, and so on, whether we make an exact calculation or a rough estimate, more or less, as the saying goes. Time, therefore, is not the movement of a body.